Hello and welcome to the final episode of our series building a C-sharp app to extract data from Jira using the REST APIs. In earlier episodes we logged into Jira, we got our J session ID, we then used it to request data from a couple other APIs, we converted that response JSON into CSV format. So here in this episode we'll just be dumping that finished output into a file and that shouldn't be too hard so let's get started so up at the top here the first thing I want to do though is specify where my files get written and for that I will create a string called export directory and then I'll shorten it to just dir that will be in whichever folder I am currently executing I'm gonna have a downloads folder this is executing in my C-sharp folder in here I want a downloads folder and I'll create that now before I forget downloads and the next thing to do would be to pass that to my constructor so I can use it and having sent it to the constructor I need to change the constructor to receive it so string new export directory this constructor then will write the value into a property which I need to create private string export dir and, and then the constructor can do its work it will populate this property with the value it received so with that in place we can go right down to the bottom to our write to file function and start coding that and the first thing I'll do is pop in a try and catch block And um, in there, then we can put our standard error handling into the catch clause. And we'll just change the name. Here we go, error in write to file. If an error, now we also need our success output, and we'll copy and paste that in. If failure, we get this. If success, we get this. And we want to write what variable are we using? We are write to file output and. I'll copy that but it's a boolean um, so this was just an arbitrary choice when we write to a file we expect it either to work or not to work on uh, sort of zero or one but it, it is arbitrary so we can change that and flag that condition just as easily with a string if we do that then it'll be easier to well, down here we'll need to change that to a string as well so it's empty to begin with so that will make it a little bit easier to write it in here write to file output and write to file output now our success case can be written um, with that in place let's let's create our our file and for that I'll use the um, uh, write all text function in in uh, file dot write all text that's in system IO which we already imported that is going to take a file name and a and some data to write which will be our CSV data so we need a file name string file name and I like to timestamp my file name so let's create a timestamp to use inside our file name and for this we can just use uh, date time now we'll put it to a string and we'll give it a useful format uh, year month day hour minute second that will give us a string with the current date time uh, written into it from that we can append that onto our file name now our file name will just be uh, well it's going to it's going to be a full path here so we better use that variable we created that was this dot export dir and it is terminated with a forward slash so we don't need to worry about separating it from our file name we can just start writing a file name I'll call this records and I'll give it an underscore to separate it from the timestamp that we're going to append and after that it will need an extension it's a CSV file we'll just give it the CSV extension okay now we have a proper file name here file dot write all text is in the system IO namespace which we have so write all text and it takes a file name as a first parameter and then some data and that is this dot CSV data okay that looks pretty good but we don't have anything here in write to file output we need uh, to populate that so there are um, what do I want there I think 
if I have successfully written this file, then it makes sense to, to interrogate the file itself to get some information back that we could use in our success case. And if I were going to do that, I would probably want to know where it was written and, and how much data was written into it. That's a good summary of things. So let's start off by getting the full path of the file instead of just the dot forward slash downloads starting things off. We'll want the full path and for that I can use system.io has a get full path function and I just need to pass in the file name. That will give me the full file path and then for the number the amount of data written into that file I can use the file info object file info f equals a new file info and I just pass it the file name as well and then from that I can get back the length of the file that that it's looking at and that is it comes back as a long so that would be long I'll call it bytes written and that we can get from calling our file info objects length property okay um, so that's everything we want to write into write to file output let's, let's populate it so this dot write to file output is going to equal let's start it off with a message that tells us we were successful then we'll put in uh, x bytes written to whatever file so that will be bytes written to no no i need to say <laughs> the message so bytes written it will be bytes written to and then we'll give it our full path. Okay, a success x bytes written to y. And that should be everything we need. It'll print it out right here in the case of success and in the case of failure it will give us whatever error message that that happened. So save and let's try it out. Hmm, bytes written does not exist. Byte byte written. There's my problem. Bytes written. I'll save file and it all compiles so now we can go right to executing it and before we do that though let's open up our downloads folder so we can watch it populate okay good and enter oh so we got our message 2785 bytes written and let's open that up to take a look at it all right, opens up just fine, and the data looks pretty good here. There's our issue created dates, our issue updated dates, creator, all the issues that we have listed. That looks great. All right, that is a working example of a data extract app written in C Sharp that pulls data from Jira. Hopefully this kind of very basic example will give you at least a decent starting point. If you're interested in some other programming language, I'll be posting this exact same exercise in uh, Java and in Python as well. And if you're interested in that Iona FX Business Intelligence plugin, I'll uh, throw up that slide now that, that shows why it's so helpful, has a few features benefits listed on it. So thanks for tuning in and have fun inventing your own tools with this.